Texas is facing a crisis it's never seen before. Across the state, water is growing scarce. Meanwhile, the climate is changing. Millions of people are moving here, and industries that need water to thrive are planting roots. KXAN, in partnership with political website The Hill, is taking a closer look now at how these impact uh, these issues rather are impacting your life. And joining us live in studio this afternoon is Saul Elbine with The Hill. Thanks for your time. Thank you. All right, let's just start with giving us a, a general prognosis, really, of the state's infrastructure as it relates to, to water. What trajectory are we on? Well, let me, before I answer that, take us out a step and mm -hmm. say, Texas weather has always been weird. I mean, it was drought, 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 and now just look outside, it's pouring. Look at what just happened in Dallas. Mm -hmm. So that's the thing we have to keep in mind. Texas weather has always been like that, right? Lots of ups, lots of downs. That's not going to change. On average, it looks like from a lot of projections, the state, maybe well, there's a little more water, maybe there's a little less water on average. But climate scientists like to say, it's not the means that kill you, it's the extremes. <laughs> and that, to that, to that, suddenly that average doesn't change, and that's what we're looking at. So Texas has a great water planning process. We had a bad drought in the 90s, and it scared everyone so much that they created a process where everybody in the state, from the bottom to the top, has to be in constant communication about where the water is going to come from. That works really well, but it's based on an assumption that's no longer true, and that's that Texas weather is just weird, not extremely weird. Mm. And that's, I think, the position that we're in. The state system relies on the state to give smaller municipalities that don't have the resources of an Austin or a Dallas the computational firepower to know what the population's likely to be, to say, we know these resources are, these institutions are coming in, we know what these resources are, let's make sure they meet. We're very good at that, but the one thing we are not doing is trying to change that portrayal against a future that is ever more unstable. Speaking of being the land of extremes, I think it was the state climatologist in Texas back in the 1930s who said, Texas is the land of perennial drought interrupted by the occasional mm. devastating flood. It's mm -hmm. always up and down. Mm. But speaking of the weather getting more extreme, some state agencies do not use climate change in their planning going forward. What have you guys found in your reporting uh, in terms of planning for climate change for these infrastructure water issues? Right, so the Texas Water Development Board, which is the, which is the agency that oversees the entire process of water planning to make sure that there aren't too many conflicting uses, that everybody has enough water. They build their assumptions around the idea that fundamentally the future is going to be like the past. And I don't want to rag on them for this. Like, it's a very hard thing to do. Leaving aside all of the political headwinds in a state like ours, leaving all of that aside, it's really hard to go from even a pretty good statewide portrayal, a statewide average, to what you can use on the ground. I mean, how do you know if you should build that reservoir? How do you know what to do? And so, I mean, especially given that they haven't had, you know, the political push that you see in other states, they really haven't been able to do that. So what that's meant for a city like Austin is we did it ourselves. Um, the city had a really bad drought in 2011 to 2015, if I remember right, I wasn't here. Um, and you know, people got really scared and they realized the state wasn't taking climate change into account, so they had to do it. They hired a climate scientist from Texas Tech, they produced their own models, and they created this you know, really good plan where they sort of did the Texas state water plan in miniature where they went down, they created a plan and they took it to a whole lot of stakeholders and they got a plan that sort of represents Austin and reflects Austin. And that includes, you know, they're looking at big long-term generational things like finding a spot in the hill country potentially or the Trinity Aquifer where we can start injecting our own excess water, mm. either from big rain events or just from our normal allotments by saving more, sort of create our own water source moving ourselves from a situation where we're entirely always dependent on the Colorado and to a lesser extent the Edwards. Um, shorter term, they're looking at all sorts of reuse and uh, recovery recycling where, for example, just to take one, in 2024, big developments are going to have to start collecting their own wastewater on, tap, on, on hand, treating it, and using it for non-drinking purposes from fountains to watering to, um, you know, to flushing toilets. But here's the thing, like Austin can do that, Houston can do that, Dallas can do that. It already had to do it because its population is growing and the things that you do when your population is growing is you're always looking for more resources and you're always mm. looking to cut demand. But that gets less and less true. Again, the smaller the, the municipality, the more fraught the concept of climate change is there, 
the more a person who, who's a manager who wants to talk about it is pushing against something and can't just do it on their own. And you know, the more likely they are to only have one source of water, which might be fine now, but how's it gonna be doing in 25 years as there's more pressure on everything from every direction. And what do those smaller cities do because they don't have the resources and typically mm -hmm. they are impacted the most by failing uh, water infrastructure. So what solutions are on the table for them? Well, actually, um, I'm glad you asked that because there are a couple of great examples in Texas that we uncovered. Um, other people knew about them, obviously, but we didn't. Um, uh, in the really bad drought in 2015, Wichita Falls switched to a sewage recycling system where they actually, their wastewater, um, they created a very good system, uh, made sure it was clean, but they cycled it from wastewater back through treatment, back into the tap. They only did that as long as the drought lasted. Eventually they were able to switch back to an indirect system. Um, but in big spring, they still do that. And I mean, that's sort of the price of living in some place that dry. And I think one way to think about this is the more of that sort of thing, and it's a spectrum, but the more of it that we're willing to do, the more we can save. The more we can save, the more we can store. The more we can store, the longer it is meaningfully sustainable to live in a place like this. And that's the thing we have to remember. Climate change is a thing that makes disasters worse, but a disaster is always the confrontation between a thing that is happening, a group of people, and how prepared they are. If we're prepared, and we can be more prepared, then whatever happens, we'll still have to deal with. Something could still overwhelm us, but we'll be in a better position. And so I wanna say that is what, you know, I think the coolest thing is, is when the Sunset Commission met in July to see what the um, Texas Water Development Board would need to do for its next iteration, uh, they told it, and this was a majority Republican panel, there were two Democrats on it, unanimously they voted, they have to consult the state climatologist. Mm -hmm. Now what will they do with that information? Will they listen? Will they drag their feet? We don't know. And I think it'll be very varied across a lot of agencies. But for a lot of water managers now, it's if going and talking to the state climatologist or being part of at least a chain of conversations in which he is involved, that's now part of their job. Right. Which also means, you know, as Nathan Johnson, state senator from Dallas, told me, it gives them political cover. Mm, okay. Yeah, very yeah. interesting. This is going to be one of the issues of our time. Yeah. Growing population, worsening droughts in Texas. Saul Elvine with The Hill, thank you so much for your time. Our special with The Hill, Dried Up, airs on Monday, Labor Day at 4 p.m. We'll be right back.